Hi there, Andrew Jackson, AJ Design Studio. Got another video in my lozenge series, looking at lozenge or pill forms. So today's subject is a light. I had in my head, I had seen this form somewhere and I couldn't quite remember where it was. Uh, so an asymmetric uh, lozenge. And then I remembered, I, I'll show you some photos. So this is, this is uh, when I went to Apple Park for a visit. Uh, this is outside the visitor centre, I was taking photos of details, so it's a street light I guess, uh, and these are the best photos I've got, and I couldn't find any on the internet, so I, I did some measurements in Rhino, measured the kerb, assuming that was 6 inches tall, and then sort of extrapolated out some, some overall dimensions in there, that's the only sort of angle I've got, so you can sort of see some depth, yeah. So then I just dumped it into SolidWorks and started experimenting. First I had this top surface as an arc, but it wasn't deep enough. So if you look here, it looks looks like there's quite a bit of volume up here. So yeah, interesting form. Definitely had some challenges around the back end here and also trying to get this full round, this full round here while keeping this face uh, like the virtual the edge here reading as a linear or planar face or you know so it would sit down on a plane so I'll just skirt through this model really quickly and go through how I built it so I had some references those are from Rhino I imported those uh, they're just visual references I ended up deviating from that because it wasn't quite wasn't quite right then I've got my front control which is using just simple slots tangent overall dimensions and then I've got my right hand control, so from my right elevation. And these are referencing the front control drives this, the right control. So up here you can see where I had an arc, and in the pictures it looked like there was much more volume up here, so I ended up replacing it with a quadratic um, Bezier curve. So degree 3 with 4 CVs, symmetric, and then this angle here which basically drives that how full that is. Okay, so to try and end up with a, after the full round goes on, I've had to add some compensation. So I've, I've added this circle here, which is tangent to this, that section and this outer edge. So that's like allowing for what the model, what the form's gonna look like once you get the full round on. So I'm actually gonna build out to this virtual sharp out here, or theoretical edge, and then put a curved continuous blend around the outside. Then I have built my outside uh, G3 spline here. So like the other three videos I've made using a section of arc and then a degree seven Bezier curve spline, style spline, uh, G3 connection on each end. I'll put a link in the description to my first video which goes into this in detail. And then I've got my inside spline and a spline there. As you can see, okay, then I have extruded the inside surface, just created some center planes there, then I'm going to mirror this around. So this is the resultant inside surface. Knit those together, then I've trimmed them back to give us the taper. So these, these lines are converted entities out of the right control sketch, and then I've extruded the top, which that's again, that's converted entity out of the control sketch. And then I'm going to trim, oh sorry, I'm going to extrude the bottom surface, which is an arc. I didn't bother converting that to a spline. And then I've trimmed those, both of those back, so they're trimmed back to where the G3 spline starts. Then I've created a midsection, because I want this to transition from quite a full, fuller surface on the outside here, and start losing some mass, and then end up rounded an arc. So this is set up the same as this uh, top surface. So you can see there the mid surface again, uh, that's if it were, were an arc, so I'm adding this mass here. Okay, now I'm just done some extruding here because I want to mirror this um, control, uh, the G3 spline over to use uh, on the bottom side of this blend. So I've just done a few body mirrors, knitted and converted in entities, and then we've Gonna make this in um full depth rather than modeling to the center line. 
just to get around some continuity issues. Okay, so there's the main surface. SolidWorks is doing its weird thing where it, sometimes with Zebra, like the poles get mixed up. Um, but anyway, hopefully it will correct itself. Okay, knitted that together and trimmed it down the middle because I just want to build a quadrant and then mirror that over. And it seems like double handling, making building this um, as full width and then trimming it in half. But at least I know when I mirror this over, the this this is going to be okay. Okay, so what do we got now? Okay, I'm going to trim back this edge to give us an edge like so. So that's basically the side before the blend goes on. And then up the top here, I've created a a sketch with a bit of setback on it, and then I've added a spline, which is which I've extruded. So that's curvature continuous, um, and it's extruded. And then I've trimmed the end off that, trimmed it with the same trim that I trimmed the top extrude with, and then I've repeated the same along the bottom. So there's two sketches there, one of them's a an offset of the, the circle with a, a diameter of 12 that is in my right hand control sketch and I've added some relief, 0.5 offset to allow this uh, curvature continuous spline to uh, have more space to turn or curve. Okay, and then trim that back with the same curve that trim this extrude. And then I've created some lines that go from this end of this blend, like if you imagine it went right around to here, and then that's trimmed this edge back, and then I've done the same for the inside surface. So when we're looking in from the right, these um, these edges are linear. Then I've created a section here. So note with all these sections here, they have a tangent constraint on them. They're tangent to this little ribbon surface here, which is planar. So if I go on here, you can sketch on that surface. So my blends, basically, they just touch the surface uh, right along here. Around here, not so much, uh, just where that, that section in the middle is, but along the bottom they do, like, definitely touch it. And then I've created that edge blend on the end. So now if I look in from the right and run a quick sketch. This full round here or the full blend is fairly linear. So it's fairly close to being planar. I mean, I, yeah. I could spend much longer trying to get that like so it sits dead flat on a table but for the purpose of this video I think it's close enough. Okay and then I just turn this into a solid. Sorry I've got a 10 minute timer going I've only got two minutes left I'm trying to make my videos faster. Okay thickened. Then I have offset this inside surface because I'm going to thicken this out and create a separate part so thicken that body Offset some outside faces, insert a surface cut, cut this inside surface out. Move face to create a clearance. Uh, added a few fillets in here. Then we're going to mirror this around to make it a complete body. Like that. And just going to add like the mounting stub on the bottom. That you can see. here, which I guessed was about 140 millimeters tall and about 100 millimeters in diameter. Yeah, so there you go, that's Apple Park Streetlight, uh, what would you call it, offset lozenge, uh, asymmetric lozenge. Um, yeah, so a little challenge, I'll put the file in the description if anybody wants to have a look at it. And thanks for watching, Andrew Jackson, AJ Design Studio, see ya.